The Kerala government is gearing up for two major legal battles. First, the government is planning to sue the governor for delaying signing bills passed by the state assembly. Governor's refusal to sign six bills has led to a constitutional crisis as the bills cannot become law without the governor's assent. The government is also planning to sue the union government for cutting down the borrowing limit permitted by the law. The state is arguing that the union government's decision is illegal and unconstitutional. Government sources have hinted at the possibilities of legal action for more than a year, but they are yet to file the cases. Recently, however, ministers have made remarks that hint the government may move the Supreme Court on both the issues. In this video, we'll take a closer look at both of these issues. This is not a new issue in Indian polity. State governments have often accused the union government of using governors to control states when the ruling party in the state is different from the ruling party at the centre, or in the BJP's language when there is no double engine government. Recently, the Telangana government filed a petition in the Supreme Court seeking an order to its governor Tamilisai Sundararajan to clear the bills passed by the government. The Supreme Court emphasized that the bills must be returned as soon as possible. And I quote, The first proviso to Article 200 states that the governor must as soon as possible, after the presentation of the bill for assent, return the bill which is not a money bill, together with a message for reconsideration to the House or Houses of State Legislature. The expression as soon as possible has a significant constitutional intent and must be borne in mind. Unquote. The court did not set any time limit for the governor to act on the bill, but it made it very clear that the governor must not sit on it. The Telangana governor signed the bills while the case was underway and the petition was disposed of since it was no longer valid. Kerala is hoping for a similar approach from the court in the case of the bills pending before Governor Arif Mohammad Khan. They are the Lugayukta Amendment Bill, the Kerala Cooperative Society's Amendment Bill, the University Appellate Tribunal Bill and three University Law Amendment Bills, two of which are on appointing independent chancellors to state universities and another one to change the formation of Search Cum Selection Committee for Vice Chancellors. The second contention is with the union government over Kerala's borrowing limit. The union government has told Kerala that it can only borrow 20,521 crore rupees from the public market this financial year, which is significantly short of Kerala's anticipated 33,420 crore rupees. Kerala's primary objection revolves around the reduction of its credit limit by 13,000 crore rupees, which is the amount held in the public account. Kerala says this figure is inflated as the Accountant General's estimate last year showed that only 6,500 crore rupees were in the public account. Instead of considering the actual figure, the union government calculated an average over three-year period. Kerala strongly asserts that this methodology is unacceptable. Also, as per the norms set by the union government and the RBI, states cannot borrow beyond a certain limit, which is 3.5% of the SGDP, to maintain fiscal responsibility. For Kerala, this amount will only be sufficient to run its day-to-day -day business. Hence, it set up two companies, KIFB and KSSPL, for funding infrastructure development and ensuring money for social security pensions. The controller and auditor general in its audit report for 2019-20 argued that the KIFB loans should be included in the state's borrowing limit. Later, loans for KSSPL were also brought under the government's KT. This comment in the CAG report was rejected by the Kerala Assembly in 2020. However, the CAG and the union government reiterated that the loans were the responsibility of the state government. It then said that the loans taken by these companies will be cut down from the state's limit gradually. Kerala says the union government is not applying this regulation to the central loans. For example, loans acquired by public sector institutions are not considered part of this debt. Besides, the fiscal deficit of the union government is way beyond the mandated amount, while almost all states maintain it under the limit. 
Kerala argues that this inconsistency represents a double standard. They say the differential approach affects states' prospects and is against the federal structure. During the previous government, legal advice was sought from constitutional expert Fallius Nariman, who suggested legal recourse could be pursued. However, the government did not act on it. But it may be a different story this time. Both these legal actions, if they take place, will be an interesting chapter in the federal system of the Republic of India.